today we're going to talk about the purification of lepers. Or are we going to talk about the purification of lepers? Hallelujah. And in, in the, the name of the portion is Metzorah. Actually, in the Hebrew, it's Hamsorah. And Hamsorah means, well, let me put it this way. This shall be the procedure, or the Torah, actually, is what it says, of a Metzorah. Hamsorah is how you say it, of a Metzorah. And Metzorah is, is the leprosy, the word leprosy is Sarah. Okay. But we're not going to talk much about leprosy. Okay. Um, last week we talked about leprosy. We were in a season of the removal of the leaven. Okay. Oh, just for the for the camera, the, the, the portion is Baikra or Leviticus 14 1 to 15 33 and the Hathor portion 2 Kings 7 3 to 20. Um, but we've been talking about the season of the removal of leaven, which is now three weeks. It's been for three weeks. God is getting the leaven out of us. The world calls it spring cleaning, and it's just about their houses, their physical houses. But the spring cleaning is inside of us. God is doing a cleaning inside of us. And everybody has stuff that we need to clean out, okay? We have a lot of junk in our lives. And, you know, He's working with me regarding anger. He's working with other people regarding other things. Um, anger and a bit of impatience. I'm not asking for patience. I'm just saying that. that that's been my issue. Okay. And I know a lot of people actually are having issues with patience. They want this whole thing to get turned around already. Okay. It will, but it's in God's time. <laughs> And it's already beginning to happen. It's happening in Israel and it's happening here. And just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. Amen. Um, Abba, help me convey what you want me to share uh, with everybody today. I ask, Lord, that you would just have your way. Have your way, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Lord, we look forward to the coming of your glory and the healings that's going to take place on a massive scale, Lord. Uh, but where heaven will be on earth, it will be on earth as it is in heaven. At least individually and collectively, where your people are gathered and worshiping you and adoring you, and they're not thinking about themselves, and they're not trying to please other people, uh, but... Because every pastor and every leader of every church and congregation, Abba, they're not here to please people. They're here to please you. And they're here to share what they have to say from your spirit, Abba. And I know, Lord, you're going to open that up soon to people, the realization and understanding that we are here to serve your kingdom. Thank you, Abba. Uh, last week, we were talking about leprosy and what causes it. And leprosy has to do with spots and blemishes. You all know about spots and blemishes, right? It has to do with the last act that God is going to do for his bride to get every spot and blemish. So we can come for a bride without spots or blemishes. That means a bride without spiritual leprosy. It can come in many forms. But the biggest one is our tongue. The biggest one is, is how we judge each other with our eyes and, and what we listen to versus what we shouldn't listen to. Okay? And that's what I talked about last week. Um, but this week, it's all about the cure of leprosy. Well, the only cure of leprosy is, is the bridegroom, <laughs> Yeshua. Okay? He's the cure of leprosy. He went to the cross and he became a sort of leper for us, taking all sins upon him. 
all of our sins, for all, for, forever, from Adam to the end. If we would just believe in him. And then he could clean us. So, let's just read a couple verses here. Chapter 14, verse verses 1. Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, This shall be the Torah of the Metzorah. <laughs> right. The Torah Ham Torah. On the day of his purification, he shall be brought to the Kohen. The Kohen shall go out to the outside of the camp. The Kohen shall examine and see that indeed healed is the affliction of the Sara'at, or the leprosy, from the Metzorah, the one who's afflicted, the afflicted one. The Kohen shall command that one take for the persons being purified two birds that are alive and that are kosher, and wood, a cedar, crimson dye, wool, and hyssop. And the Kohen shall command that one slaughter the bird that was choice into a vessel of earthenware over water from a spring. The bird that is live, he shall take it with the wood, a cedar, and with the crimson dye, wool, and with the hyssop. And he shall dip them with the bird that is, that is live into the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the water from the spring. Then he shall sprinkle upon the person being purified from the leprosy or the tzara'at. Seven times he shall purify him, and he shall send away the bird that is live toward the surface of the field. Okay, I'm just going to read a few more verses, and I'm going to break this down for you. Wash shall the person be purified his clothing. He shall shave off all his hair and wash himself in the water and become pure. Thereafter he may enter into the camp, but he shall dwell outside of his tent for a seven-day period. And it shall be that on the seventh day he shall shave off all his hair, his head, and his beard, and his brows, and his eyes, and the brows of his eyes, and all his hair shall be shaved off. He shall wash his clothing, and he shall wash his flesh in water, and become pure. On the eighth day, he shall take two male lambs unblemished and a new one, which is a young lamb, in its first year, unblemished and three tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a meal offering mixed with oil and one lack of oil. Okay. I'm going to stop there for the moment because this is not as complicated as it sounds. Uh, but you have to have spiritual eyes to see. You have to do a little research and find out. Okay, what is the meaning of all of this? Because remember what Yeshua said, and he said that uh, I speak in parables, so those those who who don't want to hear will not hear, and they're and those who don't want to see will not see. I think that's, that's close to a little paraphrase there. Okay. But basically, he was looking for those who wanted to find the meanings, who wanted to get a little deeper. Okay. So let's break this down. So the Kohen goes to the outside of the camp. Yeshua was slaughtered outside the camp. He went out also to the nations to reach those full of sin to heal them through his apostles. We go out to the nations and bring them to Messiah, bring them to the kingdom. The two living birds that are kosher, the cedar wood, the, the crimson dyed wool and the hyssop, this is what they mean. The birds, the poor, it means to depart early, to go early. Run to do your will, according to the word. Run to do the will of the Lord. The cedar wood is the strongest of the trees. Firm strength. Okay? It spreads. It's a, it adorns the temples and the royal palaces. Trees are people. In Deuteronomy 20, 19, and 20, God told Israel, do not destroy, when you go to war, do not destroy the fruit trees. For they are like a man. They are as a man. Okay. 
And then we have this other strange thing. What is the crimson dye wool? Okay. So we have the hyssop. Okay, actually, I didn't get to the hyssop yet, but the hyssop is in the middle of page two, toward the bottom. The word is azote. It's the smallest of plants. Seemingly insignificant, but yet it brings, it, it has medicinal effects. Okay, hyssop or azote. Okay, so you have cedar wood, the strongest strength, everything about it is strength, and you have the smallest trees, which is the hyssop, but it brings healing. Okay, and then you have the the crimson dye wool. Okay, so let's look at that. Okay, it's the crimson is is the word shemi. Okay, it's the word for red dye. Okay, it also in the, in the Hebrew this is what it says. Um, uh, ush, ush, I'm sorry, ush mi tolaat. That's the crimson dye wool. Ushni tolaat. Okay, sheni is scarlet, and it's a. Uh, they don't know where it comes from, the, the original name, but they believe it's an insect. The dry body of a female uh, yielding coloring matter from which we get the dye to clothe the scarlet. So it's, it creates the color, this color scarlet, which is, is red. Okay. Now, you know, it comes from this worm. Okay. Remember in Psalm 22, Messiah said, I am a worm. It's a prophecy about Messiah. I am a worm, not a man. He became like a worm. And we can go to that Psalm 22. Okay. Um, start in verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day and you don't hear, or you don't answer. And by night, but I have no rest, for you are holy, and you are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you did deliver them. To you they cried out and were delivered. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. And all who see me sneer at me and they separate with their lips, saying, Wag, they wag the head, saying, commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him because he delights in him. This is what some of the, of the evil leaders in Israel said when Yeshua was on the cross. I am a worm, not a man, is what Yeshua said. His blood, his blood being spilt. This is the Shemi and this is the Tola. Okay, so, so we have uh, the cedar wood, the greatest of people, you could say, the strongest of trees. And you have the hyssop, which is the smallest of people, the smallest of trees. And you have the blood. Now, I know we're going to be talking about, probably in a couple of weeks, about the uh, para adama, the red cow. And it's going to sound similar, but it's different. And I'll show you how it's different. Okay, so we can say that Yeshua's blood covers the greatest, the cedar tree, and the smallest, the greatest of men and the smallest of men. Okay, and it was used also to, it, it was applied to the, the doorposts and the lentils. They dipped, they dipped the hyssop in the blood of the lamb and it was applied to the doorpost and the overhang, the, the lentils in, in the door, on the, on the doors, okay? That, that God passed over. He didn't bring judgment of the firstborn like he did on all of Egypt who didn't have the blood. Okay, so this is not connected though to the to the Pra Adama. Okay, now here's what they did. The Kohen commands the one who was slaughtering to slaughter the kosher bird of his choice into an earthenware vessel over water from a spring. Now this water is already in from a spring, it's already in the vessel. It's in the it's in the cup, it's it's in the vessel at the bottom. And they slaughter this bird over it.
He takes the one that's alive. So one is slaughtered and one is kept alive. He takes the living bird and the cedar wood, the crimson thy wool, no, it's the blood, the greatest of men, and the hyssop, the smallest of men. That means everybody's covered. And dips them into the blood of the slaughtered bird that was over the water that had flowed from a spring. And he sprinkles the person being purified of the leprosy seven times. He purifies him and sends away the bird that is alive toward the face. So after it's dipped into the blood, it's sent alive. It's sent over the surface of the field and he washes himself and becomes pure. Now the high priest is symbolic of Yeshua. Since is uh, this is symbolic of Yeshua taking the sin that caused the leprosy away. The bird slaughtered is Yeshua dying for us. He dies for us. And the, and the bird released is that he takes our sin away as far as the east is from the west. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now we have also in the story of, of the offerings that are done at uh, Yom Kippur, we have, we have something similar. They have two goats. One is slaughtered, the other one's released. It's called the scapegoat. Okay? So there's something similar here going on. Okay, Yeshua fulfilled all the sacrifices. This is proof of that. Okay, so, uh, but the sacrifices are going to be done in the kingdom because they show us what Yeshua did. So the bird slaughters, Yeshua dying for us, bird releases how he takes our sins away. The meaning of the two birds being like the two goats. I have that in here in your notes. It being done over spring water at the bottom of the vessel, there's, there's two purposes. Now this is really the part that I really want you to say above everything else, this part. There's two spiritual meanings. One at the cross. Remember when blood and water flowed out of the side of Yeshua? When they put a spear, see that they were breaking the legs of the people that were, may have still been alive on the cross, but Yeshua had already died. So they didn't break his legs because as the scripture says, none of his bones would be broken. That's right. Amen. So they put a spear in his side to see if it was, you know, if it, you know, to, to check if he was alive or if there was a chance that he, he'd still alive. And blood and water flowed. And it's blood and water that is our healing. Look at John chapter 19. Okay, John chapter 19. 31 to 35. The Jews, therefore, because it was the day of preparation, so that the body should not remain on the cross on, on the, uh, well, they called it the Shabbat. They said that Shabbat was a high day, but technically it wasn't a Shabbat, but it's how it was observed back then, they called it Shabbat. Ask Pilate that their legs might be broken and then they might be taken away. And, and the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man and the other man who was crucified with him. But, the, but coming to Yeshua, when they saw that he had already been, was dead, they did not break his legs. And one of the soldiers pierced his side with the spear and immediately there came out blood and water. And he who has seen has borne witness and his witness is true and he knows that he has done the truth so that you also may believe. For these things came to pass, the scripture might be full, fulfilled, not a bone of him shall be broken. But remember, the blood and water came out. Okay. Two. Okay, so so there's two spiritual meanings here. Okay, one at the cross, the blood and water flowed out. This is the water, the spring water in the cup, in symbolic form. Why? The dead one is slaughtered over the living water. It's the blood and the water. Okay. Now, here's another meaning. As, as he is the living water, Yeshua is the living water. He represents the newness of life in the spirit. 
By his resurrection, he causes us to live the resurrection life through him. This is all about being born again. And that's in John 7, 37 and 39. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, we, this is uh, during Sukkot, Yeshua stood and cried out, saying, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Yeshua was not yet glorified. So, so he, by his resurrection, okay, he, he calls us us. Now we have the living water in us. Out of us, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. The leper may immediately enter the camp, but for seven days he has to dwell outside of his tent. So think about this. He can come back into the camp, but he has to stay outside of his tent for seven more days. Okay? Then the former leper becomes like a baby and shaves off all of his hair seven days later. He becomes pure on the seventh day. This is done on the seventh day because the seventh day is symbolic of the kingdom of God. After 6,000 years comes God's kingdom. It's a 1,000 year kingdom. Okay? So the leopard's clean. There's not going to be in the kingdom, there's not going to be any sick. There's not going to be anybody dying. It says in the scriptures, someone will be considered a curse if they die. It says a youth will be considered a curse if he dies at a hundred. In other words, something's wrong. He did something really wrong. Okay? And he's considered a youth at one hundred. It even says in Isaiah 65, during those days, the days of my people will be like the days of a tree. You know how long a tree can live? Thousands of years. There are trees in Israel and got Shmini. The, the Garden of the Gethsemane that everybody calls it. It's Gethsemane in Hebrew. Okay, the place where Yeshua wept. Okay, the, where the fig tree, or not fig trees, but where the uh, olive trees were. There's still olive trees. Yeah. They The Romans cut them to stumps and they kept growing. There's still olive trees there. Thousands of years old. That's that's going to be what it's going to be like in the kingdom. There's not going to be anybody dying, no sickness. You know, the, there's no leprosy coming. There's not going to be any of this leprosy anymore. Okay, that's why he has to have a bride without spot or blemish. No leprosy on his bride. He is coming. He's, he, he talks, it says in the scripture, it talks about being equally yoked. Okay. Well, he's married us. All, not just the Jews in Israel. He's married all the, the non-Jews. They've been joined. Okay, according to Romans 11. Okay. So we are all married. He's going to be equally married. Guess what? He's Jewish. Amen. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. He follows the Torah. Yeah. He follows God's calendar. Amen. And that's what he died for. To bring all the people back to him and the Father. To bring us back into his ways. But we got to stop. And it's really important that I say, I'm saying this. We got to stop thinking these about the ways of, of the Jews as being the ways of the Jews. They're actually holy things of heaven that God gave to his people. And whether you believe it or not, if you're a believer, you are joined to that. Amen. And that means you have a new family. It's a family of Israel. And you follow the ways of Israel. You do not get encumbered by the leprosy of false doctrines, false ways, teachings that have prevailed from the time of Rome. Get the Rome out of you. Get the leaven, the, not just the leaven of sin and the various sins we do in this life, but the ways of Rome have got to come out of us. All the understandings, that's, that's spots and blemishes. Also judging one another. We are all a mess. Why are we pointing the finger at one another? We should be pointing the finger at us. What do we need to change? We can help people. People are in sin. Through the power of God working through us, they can be set free. 
And we got to see them as afflicted and sick. Not judging, well, you should be doing that. That's against the word of God. You know, yeah, you, you take a stand for you, but you don't go after the people. Who, you got to love them again. You got to love them past their sins. I used to be so like that. A lot of us were. You know, we got to see people, you know, that they're afflicted. Think of it just as leprosy. They're all leprous. We need to help them to get free of their leprosy. So that Messiah can come for them too and bring them into his kingdom. Okay. Um, they On the eighth day, now get this, after all this, on the eighth day, he brings offering of two male lambs, a young ewe lamb, uh, and a meal offering mixed with oil. Okay. He is a new creation, like the new Jerusalem, the, the Jerusalem will be. He offers his whole life to God and is anointed. The blood of the offerings for his purification is on the eighth day and is applied to the middle part of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, the big toe of the right foot. Okay, the Kohen then dips his right hand finger in the oil on his left palm and sprinkles it seven times before Jehovah in the direction of the Holy of Holies. And the rest of oil of the oil remaining in his palm, he uses to do the same to the leper as he did with the blood, applying it to the middle ear of the right of the of his right ear, the thumb of his right hand, and the big toe of his right foot. You might think this is ridiculous, but this is the right side is is God's cleansing of us. Why do you think everybody and all the wicked love to be called the leftists? Okay. I don't know why. If they really understood what it meant, they would realize that they're on the wrong side. Okay. The right side is symbolic of the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. Okay, Yeshua. The right side is the holy side. Okay. So everything's applied to the right side, and this is where we're cleansed. With the right uh, everything that our hands do, our right hand, our right thumb, okay, everything that our feet do, everywhere we walk, we, uh, remember we have our feet shot with preparation of the gospel, peace, okay, and our right ear, how are we listening? Are we listening to Messiah? Are we listening to God? Okay, so, so this is this is all symbolic of Messiah and what He does. His blood covers us. So that we can once again hear him, once again use our hands for his for his glory, and use our feet for his glory. Okay, and, and that's that's what it's symbolic of. We are led and moved by the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach HaKodesh. The oil, the oil is symbolic of his covering, the anointing that breaks the yoke is on the head. It's, it's to serve God with all our heart, all our soul, all of our strength. So, so the bread offering is, is the word of God. It's cleansing us. It's anointing us. Okay? The anointing, the oil. This is the cleaning of the leper. His anointing upon us, his, his power, his authority, okay, to hear his voice. To, to use our hands for his glory, to use our feet for his glory. Okay. He's cleansing us and it all on the seventh day because it's a, it's symbolic of the kingdom. Okay. The cleansing is on the seventh day. Because God's telling us a story. It's sort of like a parable. And all these things he had Israel do was a type and shadow of the future when Messiah would come. Amen. Okay. So... But it's also done on the eighth day because there's an even greater time coming. Because after the 7,000 years comes comes eternity. When we step into eternity, okay, where it's timeless, where there's a new Jerusalem, where there's no more sin. There's no more evil, okay, ever again. Okay, so, so this happens on the seventh day and it happens on the eighth day. Okay, isn't God wondrous? Amen. Okay, so... This is what he did on the cross. He made he made a way. He made a way through his through the blood and the water. We were watching the other day, and I, I did this before we watched it. Um, we were watching the other day. 
a video about Ron, you know, Ron Wyatt, um, how he discovered the Ark of the Covenant in the early 80s, okay, and, and, when, and he wasn't looking, he wasn't looking for, at originally, the place where the cross was, but when he went looking for the Ark of the Covenant, he found that it was right beneath the place on Golgotha where the cross was, and when, and when the, 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 um, what is it called? The, the guy who put the spear in his side. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, What's his kind of name? Name of the guy who does that? The Roman guard, whatever. Put it, yeah, the centurion. Thank you. Who put it in his side? That there was an earthquake, and the blood and water came down, and upon, and it went through a sea, a, a fissure that opened up, and it came down to land upon the the west side of the Ark of the Covenant that was down beneath the ground, okay? It opened up and you could see it, okay, where the crack was, okay? And the reason I, you know, I'm talking about this is when the blood and water flowed, that, that blood came down and it landed right there to seal, because in years past, whenever the high priest would go once a year, he would apply the blood and it would be to the east side, uh, which is to the, I guess to the right, you know. So, so on the left side, which is to the, you know, on the left side of looking at the mercy seat from the front, that blood came down upon it. Okay, so it's like even upon the ark of mercy to seal the covenant that His blood for all time is our atonement. Okay, a witness in the ground that one day will be revealed for all to see. Okay, but in heaven, there's a witness too. Okay, and Messiah, through his blood being spilled for us, his red blood, like the crimson dyed wool, covers the greatest people, which is like the cedar wood, and the smallest people, which is like the hyssop. Okay, and it purifies us. And he came, one bird dies. It's a picture of the death of Yeshua. And one bird gets let loose. It's a picture of him taking our sins away. Okay, so all this is in the story of the cleansing of the leper. Last week I talked about how we're all lepers. Okay, and he has to cleanse us. We all have various forms of leprosy, but the primary form is the slander, is the tongue, is gossip. He doesn't want that from us. We do so much harm with the words of our lips. And what does it say? We have the power to curse or we have the power to bless with our tongue. It's the biggest problem in the church is slander, is, uh, is gossip. Right now, that's the biggest sin. Of course, there are a lot of sins, but I'm saying that's the biggest one. It's a self-righteous, prideful attitude. And guess what that is? That's leaven. <laughs> leaven is symbolic of pride. Putting ourselves above somebody else. God's only going to use the humble in the coming days. He's not going to use the arrogant, the prideful. Okay, so we got to remember that. we got to think about that. Do you all understand what I've just been sharing? I just need to know. Uh, I'm not going to ask for an amen like they do in most yeah. churches. So. <laughs> so I just want to ask them to make sure you understand that this is, this is, it sounds complicated, doesn't it? but it's very simple. This is all spirit. That word, the entire Torah is spirit, but we have to learn how to see it as spirit. Okay, so if someone one day comes up to you and they feel, the Lord says, I'm supposed to anoint you, but I need to anoint your left thumb, your head, your left thumb, and your your right big toe, it's okay, let me do it. It's symbolic. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Josh. It's, it's a priestly anointing. It's the priestly anointing. So, you know, but remember, it's symbolic of what Yeshua did for us. But we need to be reminded, too, that we are holy to God. He's coming for a bride without spot or blemish, without leprosy. Okay, so, you know, we need to give it up. You know, all, all those things inside of us is keeping us. Primarily, in our case, it's Roman thoughts, Roman teachings, 
teachings that have been in the church for almost 2,000 years that have defiled us and made us unholy and have kept us in a lie. He says, I'm coming for a bride without spot or blemish. I'm coming for an equally yoked. I want a Jewish bride. And I don't say Jewish as far as like religion of Judaism. I mean spirit. Okay. I want her ready. And when she's ready, she's going to be doing all sorts of stuff. And I don't mean stuff like in the world. I mean, she is going to be healing the sick. She's going to be glowing. She's going to be going around creating things and the change th things in the world. She's going to be something that, you know, Messiah is going to be anxious to come down and get her. He said, that's my bride. She looks exactly like me. She's the one for me. You know, Father, can I go get her? And she, <laughs> yes, now it's time. Go. Go get her. You know, so, but, but, you know, right now, until then, we're trying to get, we're working on our, our salvation. We're working out our salvation with fear and trembling. We're getting all the, the problems out of us, all the leprosy, and looking at our lives and seeing what needs to be changed. And, you know, if we're doing that, that's also beautiful to the Lord. And that is a bride that's ready. If we keep looking and it says, woe is me, I'm a sinner. You know, remember that he, uh, they talked, that Yeshua talked about the two men on the, was it on the road to Emmaus, is it? No, no, that's a different two. There was another parable he gave, and he talked about the, I think it was the, uh, the Pharisee and the tax collector, I think. The tax collector. The Pharisee said, I'm glad I'm not like that man over there. Talking about the tax collector. And the tax collector was saying, Whoa, this man I'm a sinner. And, and he, he said, There's more hope for the man who says he's a sinner than there is for that Pharisee who thinks he's got it all together. You know, so let's be like that tax collector. Woe is me, I'm a sinner. Looking inward, seeing what we need to change, seeing what we need to get rid of. Okay, that's the season we're in. We got one more week because next week we celebrate Passover and we celebrate unleavened bread where we have no leaven. Okay, now I know a lot of us still have leaven around. Okay, just all I can say is put it somewhere where you're not going to touch it for seven days and just declare your house leaven free, but do not go near that leaven. That leaven is as bad as eating a big chunk of pork. <laughs> if you're Jewish, it's special. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is, I know for those who like pork, you know, obviously you don't understand what I just said, but what I'm saying is that for a Jew, we can't have pork. Okay, we don't eat pork. Because we choose to follow God, and God said that's not edible to you. Okay. So stay away from, oh, I don't know how to compare it for someone who's not Jewish. Huh? Cake. Cake. Okay, okay, Any, something that, to really give an understanding of something you do not touch. Leaven becomes bad. All sorts of cereals um, that are made of wheat, um, bread items, primarily bread, anything of bread. Stay away from it for seven days. You are holy, you're without sin for a whole week. It's a new beginning, okay? Eleven's gone. Next Friday morning, uh, me and Josh meet at the house, and we uh, and it's it's the fourteenth day, and I believe this Tuesday is the day that they chose the land. So it's the day Yeshua went into Jerusalem. So Tuesday is a very important day too. But Friday is the day that is the day that they would. Uh, the, the final act of the removal, it's called the Biorchem, that's the burning of 11. So we're going to have a burning thing in our house on Friday morning. Uh, if you want to come early, you're welcome to come. <laughs> you know, we're just going to get rid of 11. Okay, burn it. Okay. So um, you can take it and wrap it in a, a cloth, you know, and, and, you know, if you want to get it to us before then, we'll just burn it on that day. Okay. And don't have any more leaven from Friday as, as soon as it gets sundown. You can't have any leaven. You should have all the leaven out of your houses or as much as you can or put it in a place where you will not touch it. Okay. 
In Israel, they're very strict with this. They take their pens and they unscrew them and just to make sure there's no lemon items in there and they put it in a steam a steam bath, a hot water, okay? To make sure there's no leaven in there. They can't have a trace of leaven. Everywhere on every corner is a place where you can burn you can burn the leaven on the morning of the 14th. Ah, wouldn't we be excited to live there? Where the whole nation celebrating God's times and seasons. Okay. But anyhow, so I think one day the whole world's gonna be like that. You know, in symbolic form. We're all gonna celebrate. Anyhow, um, so I mean, celebrate Passover, know your house is cleaned of all that stuff. Or at least it's put in a place where it's not there. It's like, it's not there. <laughs> so, so, you know, he came to get it right and he died as the lamb and he resurrected, but he took our sins away. So why take up your sin again? It's symbolic of taking up your sin by eating leaven, taking up your sin again during that time. Uh, okay, um, okay, that's all I really wanted to share out of that. Um, there's a thing in the back of your notes you can read on your own time. It's a story from the Babylonian Talmud about how the Messiah is a type of leper. So it's a really cool story, so you can read that on your own. Abba, I asked Lord, if you just seal, seal this inside of people. Abba, we are on the move, Lord, to becoming a different person, uh, a different person, a person that is yielded to your spirit, and a new wineskin, Abba, ready for the new wine, Abba. Uh, we, if there's still an old wineskin around, Lord, let it be gone, Lord, and, because we want new wine, Lord, for what you're about to do in the earth, Abba, to step into the new and leave behind the old. To get rid of all the leaven inside of us, Lord. Help us to get rid of every trace of leaven inside of us. And Abba also, Lord, help us, Lord, to, to be a light, Abba. Only through you can we be a light, Abba. Only through your glory can we shine, Lord. You said don't hide your light where the people can't see it, but put it out for all to see. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you create such a light around us, Lord, that people will be drawn to your light and people would want to be set free of everything that they, every false thing inside of them, Abba, and that we can lead them into your kingdom, Lord. Lead them to your ways, Abba, that they can they can see, Abba, whatever religion they're from, whatever denomination they're from, Abba, they can be set free of Roman teachings, of teachings of men and teachings of demons, Abba, and the name of Yeshua. There's no one that, that can, cannot be set free, Abba. Except, except the one who blasphemes the Holy Spirit, as, as it says in your word, Lord. Uh, but we know that you can set anyone free. Even Satan worshipers can be set free. Uh, and I know, Lord, that you're going to do some amazing things in the days to come. And we want to be a part, a co-labor with our Messiah in the days that are coming. Uh, and, that, and that we will have the love, Lord, that, that you want us to have, Lord, a love. Like, like Messiah, Abba, so that we could be equally yoked with our Messiah in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba. You're the one who cleanses us, Lord, of, of leprosy. You're the one who gets rid of all the leaven, Abba. And then we ask, Lord, for your help. Lord, I ask that you seal this instruction inside of us, Lord, about the blood and the water and what you did for us, Abba. And then from the greatest of us to the least of us, Lord. And we're all humble before you, Abba. In this time, Abba, knowing what you did for us, Abba, when we remember what happened around 30 to 32 common era, Lord, Abba, almost 2,000 years ago, Lord, what you did for us. In the name of Yeshua. <laughs> Jehovah bless you and keep you. Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Jehovah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, the Olive and the Tav, the soon coming King, the Alpha and the Omega, the, the one who's coming for our bride without spot or blemish, Abba. Hallelujah.
Let's do the closing blessing for the Torah. Baruch atah Yehovah, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu Torah teve, Lecha eolam nata betuchinu. Baruch atah Yehovah, Noten haTorah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.